guys, here what I'm going to do with this picture. Uh, this picture was taken on over at Westheimer Boulevard in Houston, Texas. Uh, I was just driving down the street and saw this pretty cool uh, old vintage looking uh, movie theater place. So I took out my M240 Leica with a 50 millimeter Simulux. I think I had it set at F8. Um, so I thought this would be a pretty cool exercise to kind of see how I take this and convert it to an image that looks a little bit like a, a film uh, quality type of picture. So um, I'm going to just kind of briefly go through this really, really fast and uh, just kind of go through the steps that are in my head and ultimately down to a JPEG so I can share it with my friends. So the first thing I want to do is enable the profile correction to make sure I'm using this the, the right uh, calibration for my lens. And then, so the first thing I'm going to do here is notice that this uh, marquee, it's a little bit off kilter here. I maybe want to adjust the vertical just a bit to kind of straighten it up right there. Now I, the, it's kind of skewed the borders there. So what I'm going to do is crop this, bring this in. Uh, oops, I guess I'm rotating that. Did not mean to do that. There we go. Bring it in. Not too much, right? Maybe right there. And then bring this up where the marquee is on the rule of thirds. So about right there. Um, next thing I want to like to do to my pictures is go and play with the dehaze, kind of add a little bit of contrast. And uh, I, I think this particular picture is primed for a lot of um, uh, bringing out a lot of the colors. But if you notice here, the shadows are a little bit too, too dark. So um, maybe what, what I want to do is I like to bring down the highlights just a bit but then bring out the shadows and you can kind of see what it does down there, right? And then maybe adjust the whites a little bit, brighten up the picture just a tad. And then of course play with the whites here, uh, excuse me, with the blacks. And then, so the texture, I add, like to add a little bit of texture, not too much. Um, and then the vibrance as well, because I'd like to pop out some colors. So maybe just something like that. And then really what I want to do at this point is go down to the, the region area with the highlights and really just play with the sliders here. What I like to do is slide either to the extreme left or to the extreme right and just kind of see what I'm playing with here. So I see what that does and then I see what that does. Of course, that's so that kind of gives me an indication I want to slide to the right about 10 or 15. Same with the lights. Eh, it's too dark, so I kind of bring it back up, maybe about right there. And then same with the darks. What does that do? Nope. Nope. So kind of gives you an idea and same with the shadows. Maybe that dark in the shadows kind of pop out the shadows a little bit. And then um, <clears throat> what I want to do at this point is maybe, um, no, I was going to adjust the saturation, but I think I'm, what I'm going to do is go down to the individual colors themselves, really bring out the red. Again, if I go to the left, I can see that the color, the types of red where I'm going to impact. So I'll slide to the right. And again, I kind of want to pop it out a little bit because I think these are uh, rich colors. And then same with the blues. I go to the left and kind of slide to the right and, and really kind of get to the point where I like that look. Um, all right. And then again, lastly, I don't want to go through a, a 30 minute video here, but at this point, what I'd like to do is um, maybe add, you know, maybe play with the orange and the yellow a little bit. Yep. Make that pop. There we go, right there. And then um, and then one of the last things I'll do is maybe put a little bit of vignette and see what that does. Um, not much of a fan of that, but I'll, I'll leave it at that. And then the last thing I'll do here to give it that film look is add the grain. Um, so the grain, do, 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 there it is. Again, I like to go all the way to the right, 100%, kind of see what that does. Um, I think that adds a little bit too much grain. So then I'd bring Okay, so we had a slight interruption on the previous video, so I'm gonna just splice it up with, with this one here. And, and really what I was talking about was the grain. And that's really one of the last steps I, I like to play with here is the, the actual grain. But before I do that, I do notice that on the right-hand side of this image here, um, I got a little bit of the apartments back there, which I don't want as part of my picture. It's just those little details that kind of distract me from the overall picture. Uh, again, I can probably do this with the rest of my image, but for demonstration purposes, th those are the type of thing I look for. So I'll slide it just to the left and, and kind of get rid of that there. Um, 
And so, yeah, so at this point, what I'd like to do is maybe get down to the grain section, uh, pop that all the way to the right, and you can see that it's gonna put way too much grain, but I wanna just illustrate uh, the level that Lightroom, so it kind of produces a little bit too much. So if you're using your, like a Fuji X100V, that's sort of like your strong grain feature, um, which is okay, but it's a little bit too much for me. So what, what I'll do here, I'll slide that back to about 40, and generally that that works okay. Um, it's not, you know what, let me go ahead and bump that up to 50. Uh, that's, I mean, I suppose I could just click on here and type in the number as well. Okay, so so that's it. And like I said, I typically open this up in Photoshop, add a, uh, a white border here to give it a really uh, Polaroid look. Um, it's pretty funny how we've gone from Polaroid film or from film Polaroid digital and now we're kind of wanting to go back to the way things were so in a nutshell that's what it's like oh let me go ahead and export that as a jpeg excuse me jpeg so you can kind of see what i'm working with with, with an end product um so overwrite um, like i said this is part two of the video the first one got chopped up a little bit not sure what happened there uh, but not a big deal so here when it's since when when it's all said and done i'll open this up and Here's really what I'm playing with here. And I mean, this is just a quick example, but it's pretty cool with the things you can do with Lightroom. Uh, I think Leica renders uh, images very nicely as uh, some of the Fujifilm cameras do as well. So I hope you can apply this towards your pro process as well. Uh, for some of you, um, you know, people that are just picking up photography and just trying to learn Lightroom and just try not to be afraid of, of its, its capabilities. So with that, thank you, bye.